Okay, let's waste no time. Let's start off with sphere number one. Personally, my favorite sphere, the atmosphere. And there it is. It's gorgeous. Where all of our weather happens, where the ozone layer is. Thousands and thousands of feet up just above where I'm standing right now stretches our atmosphere. But where you see all these clouds is just a piece of the atmosphere. Did you know that the atmosphere is divided up into four layers? All right, quickly, here are the four layers of the atmosphere. We have the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. So the troposphere is the lowest layer, and that extends anywhere from four to 12 miles up in the atmosphere, depending on the season and where you are across the globe. Almost all weather occurs within this layer, and it's especially warm at the surface where we live, and then as you go up with height, that's where it gets a whole lot colder because the higher up you go, the colder it gets, where the higher altitudes also have less pressure. And that's one thing that happens through our atmosphere. The further you go up, well, the less pressure that there is, where 75 to 80% of the mass of the atmosphere is right here in the troposphere. The dividing line is called the tropopause. And then next, we're in the stratosphere. The stratosphere is most famous for the ozone layer. The ozone layer, that is where we have this thin layer around the earth that traps a lot of the UV lights. And if you look at this red line here in this chart, you notice that it starts to go up. That's because all that UV light is trapped here by the ozone layer and allows it to heat up. The next layer, the mesosphere, check this out, we're heading in the opposite direction. This is where we start to achieve some of the coldest temperatures in our atmosphere, getting down to about 130 degrees below zero. Now, we don't have a lot to mention here in the mesosphere. You might be able to see where some of the meteors are. The accessibility here is pretty dis... The accessibility is very difficult, so we haven't really explored this region all that much, and not a lot of this really affects our day-to-day -day weather. Lastly, we have the thermosphere, and the thermosphere is where things warm on up. It is that fourth layer that absorbs all of that shortwave high energy that comes from the radiation of the oxygen and the nitrogen that is uh, within the sun. So temperatures rise to extremely high values, more than about 1,000 degrees centigrade or about 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit in the thermosphere. But these temperatures are not comparable to those experienced on Earth's surface because temperatures defined in terms of about how fast those molecules move. Because the gases of the thermosphere are moving at a very high speed, the temperature is very high. But the gases are so sparse and collectively that you wouldn't really be burned even if you're in a thousand degree temperatures at this light. Quiz, what is the number one element in the air that we breathe? Do, 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 do. Time's up. If you said nitrogen, you were correct. Johnny, tell them what they want. Yeah, pretty crazy. Even though we breathe oxygen, most of our air is made up of nitrogen, just over 78%. Oxygen is close to about 21%, even though the exact number is 20.946% of the atmosphere. And number three, you probably haven't heard of this. This is argon. Argon making up roughly just below 1% of our atmosphere. But the number four, this one's a huge one, carbon dioxide coming in at 0.038%. Now that doesn't seem all that high, but carbon dioxide is significant because it's a great, great efficient absorber of energy emitted by the earth and it just absorbs everything. So that's the reason why this is such a big player whenever we're talking about global warming, just because the more CO2 that's in the atmosphere, the warmer the atmosphere is going to become. And we have seen scientific evidence that this number has been going up. But the hydrosphere is just as important for our daily weather because the hydrosphere is pretty much everything water and our planet is known as the blue planet because 71% of our planet is actually water, blanketed with water and most of that water is actually from our oceans and did you know 97.2% of our water in the hydrosphere or just water on our planet is in the oceans, most of that's salt water. So if you break down the amount of fresh water that we have, a lot of that's frozen into glaciers. So there's a very, very small percentage of fresh water. So when we're talking about the hydrosphere, things that are part of the hydrosphere are even the water vapor that's in the air, rivers, ice caps, streams, lakes, and oceans, they're all interconnected as part of the hydrosphere. So the hydrosphere also includes the fresh water from the clouds. So 
that means the water cycle is a part of this. So the main three aspects of the water cycle are one, evaporation, number two, condensation, and three, precipitation. So check this out. So here's the hydraulic cycle, and this is just one of Earth's many subsystems. Our planet's water is constantly cycled up, down, and comes back around. And it starts with evaporation. So evaporation can come from lakes and streams. As the sun is heating up that water, it rises up. It's a gas at that point, but eventually it's going to condense. And that's what our clouds are. It's just condensation. But eventually that condensation, that cloud gets way too heavy and eventually the water has to come back down and that water can either come back down as snow or it can come back down as rain when it comes back down as rain it quickly is going to usually wash through the ground sometimes run off into more streams and creeks sometimes it can go back down into the water table but then other times if it falls as snow on top of the mountains well that eventually could be melting ice melting snow that comes down and then along the streams and rivers, especially during the springtime, it all continues to repeat itself. So this is the water cycle and also the hydrosphere. So pretty much everything water is sphere number two, the hydrosphere. Now on to sphere number three, let's talk about the geosphere. Geosphere is pretty much just rocks, minerals, anything that's the ground, and just planet Earth itself. So lying beneath the atmosphere and below our oceans is the geosphere. And the geosphere is also the ocean floor itself, the rocks, the sand, everything there. And you wouldn't think about how deep our actual Earth is. The geosphere, which is pretty much the rock of planet Earth, extends from the surface to the center of the planet, which is about 4,000 miles, making the geosphere the largest of the four spheres that we're talking about. So based on compositional differences, the geosphere is divided into three principal regions. There's the core, there's the mantle, and then there's the crust. The core is broken down into two parts. You have the inner core and the outer core, and the inner core is actually roughly about the size of the moon. Then you have the outer core, and all this is super hot, just liquid magma, molten rock that is very slowly circulating beneath our feet. You have the mantle, which is the main reason why that we have any plate tectonics but then on top of that is the crust so i'm not going to go too much further because brad talked a lot about this yesterday but sphere number three is the geosphere and the last sphere that we're talking about today is the biosphere which is pretty much life itself you are a part of the biosphere if you have a dog and an animal they're technically part of the biosphere the grass growing in your backyard any zone of life is part of the biosphere and that can live in our oceans live in the air My tiny tiny microbes are all a part of this but that is all life, ocean life, as I was mentioning, also tree roots, burrowing animals, well down into the ground, all a part of the biosphere itself. And this is the last thing that is really survived by the hydrosphere and the atmosphere itself. So it's the atmosphere that is able to eventually rise up these clouds with water vapor and eventually it rains, it replenishes life. And as the plants go, they emit oxygen that feeds the atmosphere and then we breathe in that oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is consumed by the plants. So as you can see, each sphere is connected in some other way. And that's what makes life on planet Earth so special. It's the water, it's the Earth, it's the life, it's the atmosphere that comes together to make this truly a beautiful and breathtaking planet.